All right, it is time for my series TBR wrap-up update. I do this every season. I do it around the equinoxes, and that's how I do it. So it always is like midway through a month to midway through another month, but it's always three months of time, right? So every three months I check in, what have I finished? What did I continue and start? And what do I want to prioritize in the upcoming months? Because it helps me feel less overwhelmed. It helps me maintain accountability to things that I care about. And it kind of shows me when things are not that big of a priority to me and if I should DNF them or maybe choose to restart and continue at a later date. That sort of thing. I've been doing this since I started my channel. So if you ever want to watch any of the pe previous ones, they're in a wrap up or TBR playlist that I have on the channel. So first we'll do the wrap up. If I have any video reviews, I will point you that way and I will summarize my thoughts, but we're not going very in depth. We're more just like, what did I read? And <laughs> because of my Goodreads Choice Awards project that um, went up in February, I read a lot of series that I didn't talk about in my winter series TBR. Um, so I completed a lot of series that I didn't even bring up and I don't really have reviews for any of them because they're not really what I review on the channel. Like I don't think anyone needs from me a should you read a Folk of the Air trilogy. Like I don't think I'm the booktuber for that. I think there are other booktubers. Um, I do think I will eventually do a Shadowhunter one because I read a lot of Shadowhunter but I want to kind of finish it at this point. I'm like so close to having read all of the novels in <laughs> Shadowhunter and it's fun enough for me. But cart before the horse, what series did I finish? I finished The Mortal Instruments. So we'll start with this one. This is like OG Shadowhunters, especially the first three. This is like the beginning. <laughs> and I had read the first three back when I was in high school, 14 years old or something like that. Did not get on with them then. I like it more now, especially with all six books. Um, I will say that I have learned this entire time the second to last book in a Cassandra Clare is my favorite. That is when we have the personal relationship drama and tension and we're like put on the edge and the last book usually resolves it in a way that I find lackluster. It's fine. It's not like a bad way, but I'm always like, oh, I liked the previous book and the drama and the tension. And then her plots are fine. They, they are fine. And I do think Mortal Instruments is where you can truly tell this is an HP fanfic starting point. Like that's what she used to do. And you can really feel a lot of the characters and who they're supposed to represent in this book series. And my biggest thing is Clary is so boring. Ugh, Clary is so boring. I love Jason Simon. I think they are really vibrant characters and Clary is the opposite. And I think that's my issue with this series the most. It's just like I'm supposed to believe that Clary is this really important figure and she is very bland to me. And I think you're allowed to be uh, like normal and be a fantastic character. I've read many stories like that. But this just wasn't it for me. Um, but yeah, it was a time I do think four through six, those books way stronger than one through three. Um, book five has one of my favorite tropes with Jace. So yeah, Mortal Instruments. And if you were curious how many audiobook narrators there was for this series, there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or eight for these six books. It, it was wild and it was inconsistent when we were using British or American accents and it was, it was a time. That's just like a whole other conversation. But you would think with something this popular, it would have just been like one or two narrators, but it was a lot and I was a little jarred by that. But it didn't really actually affect my experience because I did do this entirely on audiobook, except for maybe reading some of the ends of the books in the morning, like maybe book five. I finished reading with my eyes because I just like was really into it. When I get really into it, I'll switch to my eyes. But actually, no, book five, I actually read in a day in the car. So never mind. It wasn't that one. Maybe it was book six. Um, so continuing, I read The Infernal Devices. Um, this one, again, had multiple narrators. This one only had four narrators for the three books which again, wild. I will say, and I said this in the Goodreads video, if you don't want to spoil Mortal Instruments or Infernal Devices, you should read them in publication order. I read Mortal Instruments and then I read Infernal Devices. That was kind of a mistake because Mortal Instruments kind of spoils the resolution for Infernal Devices. At least it does if you can follow the threads and the crossovers pretty well because Clockwork Princess came out before, uh, was it City of Fallen Angels? I, the last book in Mortal Instruments. So just just know that like if you care about the personal dynamics between characters, the books kind of do have crossovers in a way that could spoil your experience. So if you truly are like, I love this publication order for these nine books, um, I will say the main character in this Tessa Tress, I don't remember her name. I think it's Tessa. She was fine. I didn't like love her, but she was fine. I again, really liked the main male characters more. Um, Jem and Will were phenomenal and I loved their friendship. I wish when this book was written that she had pushed like a different type of like polyamory sort of situation instead of a love triangle. Like I loved the love triangle. It was fun. But uh, like I believed the love of Jim and Will for each other way more than I did anyone with Tessa. Okay. Like 
<laughs> I don't know. That's just where I was. Um, but it was cool. And it was interesting being with a different type of character in the Shadowhunter world. I love the crossover with our warlock friend. He's my favorite. I love how he's in every single series. I love him a lot. Um, and I guess I'll just finish up the Shadowhunters. I also read The Last Hours, which is my favorite. Um, it's definitely too long, but it's my favorite because this is more of an ensemble cast. So you do have a love triangle. That is still here. If you do not like love triangles, I do not recommend any of these books. If you don't like soap operas, if you don't like dramas, if you, if Buffy was not your thing, steer clear. That's what I'm saying. If you didn't like Charmed or Buffy or any of those types of things, this is like a book version of that. Probably not like quite as good because it's not like true monster of the week. But yeah, that's that's what I'll say. And but I like the ensemble cast. I like getting to see all these other characters come together. And for once, I love Cordelia, our main character. I love her. She's not perfect, but I think she was interesting. She was vibrant. Her mistakes made sense to me. M the miscommunications or the lack of communications made sense to me. I mean, it was still frustrating, but like I read these for the frustration. So that's where I'm at there. So those were successful things I read for that. And then the other one I finished was The Folk of the Air trilogy. I'm not including the newest release because I read the freaking trilogy of The Cruel Prince. I did that. <laughs> Didn't like it. Don't recommend for most people, um, especially if you have similar tastes to me. I mean, it depends like what you find compelling, but there was not enough interpersonal relationship like drama on the page for me to believe this whole like enemies to lovers? Question mark? I, I don't know. The third book was actually my favorite. I actually really liked how that one was like dark fairy tale. The rest were all court intrigue and what I think was really boring. Nothing ever felt alive to me. These were all such short, long books. Um, so that's how I felt about those. So yeah, I did all of that. I also finished the Symbiosis duology, which I primarily talked about with my patrons because we read the first book last fall. And then we read, a few of us read Interference together. And in general, I think we all still liked Interference, the second book, but the first book was stronger. Um, that, that's how it is for me as well. Like I read the first book, I was thinking about purchasing both of them and I read the second one and I still really like the thought experiment, the idea of, okay, fast forward a century. And also now maybe earth is going to interfere, intersect with this. What does that look like? And I think there were interesting things explored, but it could have been better or more. I don't, I don't know. It was good. It was definitely good. It was a solid read, but it wasn't as good. A symbiosis, um, which is probably why I didn't make a, like a should you read for it or I didn't make a standalone review. A, I haven't had the spoons to do reviews unless I really have something to say and I really liked it, but I didn't love it. So that's where I landed on that duology, but I finished it, which was on one of my goals. That was actually in the video. <laughs> so I did that. And then the big one, the big one that I finished was Wheel of Time, which I have a entire spoiler free should you read video on that. It is like 20 some minutes long, but I think it's one of the best review videos I've ever done. <laughs> Personally, I'm pretty proud of it. I'm pretty proud of what I decided to talk about and how I did it. But yeah, I finished Wheel of Time. It's it's wild to me that it's no longer a thing that is like looming over my TBRs. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Any If you want any of my opinions, go watch that video because I really do un unpack it there. So things I caught up on, I did read The Faithless by C.L. Clark and I reread The Unbroken. So I read The Unbroken and The Faithless. So that's The Magic of the Lost, I believe is the name of that series. Although I just always think of it as like the, the Unbroken series because I am unoriginal. Just use the first book name. But I loved it. I recently just got the second book to put on my shelves. It make me happy. Um, yeah, I have an Unbroken review, so you should definitely check that out. I can't really talk about The Faithless without spoiling where The Unbroken leaves off because The Faithless is a direct conversation about where we left off in The Unbroken in every way. <laughs> so, but if you liked The Unbroken, I'm fairly certain you're going to have a good time with The Faithless. If you didn't like The Unbroken, I don't necessarily think The Faithless is suddenly going to be like the book that brings you around. It is more politically focused. If that is something you were missing, it doesn't have more magic and it's still the same writing style and character work. So, I mean, I, I guess if those were your issues, that doesn't get resolved, unfortunately, for you. Um, and then things that I started, I started The Vila, which was this like... I don't know, like, I think it's written. You can buy a Kindle version of the Vila, but I listened to the Robin Miles narration and it had some sound effects, but I wouldn't say it was a graphic audio and it's like a podcast, like released as episodes. It was really fun, done by four authors I really like. I mean, um, two of them are authors I really like and respect and two are like all-time favorite authors that worked on it. And then season two, which I haven't listened to, has a different cast of authors working on it. It was a really fun and it's free on most things. Like you can listen to it anywhere you can get podcasts. So I started that and I do want to continue. 
and then I started Red Rising. I read the first two books in that, Red Rising and Golden Sun. When this video is going up, we have live shows for both of those books, and I have a standalone spoiler-free review about why Red Rising works for me, even though, like, I totally agree with all the critiques, at least for the first book. I'm still unpacking Golden Sun. I... I'm reading Golden Sun and I don't think I'm having a different experience from when I first read it, but I don't have the same experience as the rest of the internet, which is like always interesting. So those are all the things that I read. Like I said, my series reading definitely got taken over by my Goodreads choice choices, but I at least finished all of those things. So I feel like nothing's hanging over me there. Wheel of Time's off the table, which is like I said, wild. So what is on the TBR? What is in the future? I'm going to be continuing Red Rising. I'm reading one of those a month until the new book comes out. Uh, so I think for this season, we have Morningstar, Iron Gold, and Dark Age. So that's what we're doing. I'm very excited for Morningstar and I'm very nervous for Iron Gold and Dark Age, but excited for all the live shows and discussions we'll be having for that. And then guys, I'm finally, it's been almost a year. It's not quite a year, so I don't feel too bad, but I'm finally going to get back into Malazan. I think the last one I read was The Bone Hunters. Whatever book six is, I'm pretty sure it's The Bone Hunters. And that was last summer, probably in July, I want to say. I don't know for sure. And I never made a spoiler reaction video to it like I've done all the other Malazan videos I do um, because I, my brain was in a bad place. And so I could read it for enjoyment and I couldn't do that, but I couldn't put an extra work beyond what the work you put into reading a Malazan book as is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch some spoiler discussions for the Bone Hunters to remind myself what happens. Maybe if I get inspired, make my spoiler reaction to things that happened in that book if I feel like it. And then go into the seventh one, which I'm forgetting the name of, but you have the picture on the screen. So I think that's going to happen this season. I don't know if it's going to happen in April. April's already has like a really big fantasy book in it. Um, but also if I keep waiting to not have a big fantasy book in a month, it might never happen. So <laughs> there is that, but it, it's happening. I'm getting back into Malazan. I don't know if I'll finish Malazan this year, unless I really have a good momentum. If I have a good momentum, I can finish Malazan in 2023. If I don't, it's okay. If it doesn't get finished in 2024, it's fine. Um, speaking of that really long fantasy book I'm going to be reading in April, I'm reading Wall of Storm. I, Wall of Storm it's been on like so many series TBR and it's finally happening because I have made a buddy read plan. <laughs> I'm buddy reading with some friends so I'm, I'm getting back on the horse. I'm reading Wall of Storm. I'm very excited. Did not get to squeeze in the Grace of Kings reread like I wanted to because of how my reading life kind of happened in March but that's okay. I like remember what happened. I just kind of wanted to because I like rereading things and I felt like when I first read Grace of Kings I was not in a good headspace but I was also not in a good headspace in March so like trying to do that again felt like I don't know. It didn't feel like it would have been productive. So I'm really excited for Wall of Storm. And obviously, if I really like it and I have time, I would love to continue. But those are really big books. So they might only be once a quarter until I get it done. They might be every other month. I doubt it's every month. Um, the next one is our new Patreon <laughs> a series read. <laughs> we attempted Empire of Silence. And I think... Okay, the people who finished it gave it like three stars and then most people DNF'd it. So it was relatively like a universal failure amongst us in my Patreon. So I guess we all have very similar tastes, at least we have that going for us. So we voted on a new series. This one's only three books. It's a Trillary G and it's The Protectorate. Starts with Velocity Weapon. We are starting this in April. I have heard great things about it from Tori Morrow and I trust her. We don't always perfectly align, but I'm hoping this is like a fun space opera adventure sci-fi that really clicks with me. I haven't read anything by this author, but I've seen this book around for so long. So we read this every other month. So in April and June, I will be reading the first two books in the series. And then I'm starting an impromptu buddy read and we'll see if it works. We'll see if I'm hoping it works. But a bunch of us in the discord, just the public discord are going to be reading Vorka Sigan. Oh my gosh, can I say this? Vorko Sigan Saga. I am so sorry that I'm saying that wrong, but it's a epic, epic, long-running sci-fi series. This is the first book that we'll be reading. We might be reading the first two books because they usually come in like a bind-up. I don't know. I only promise to read the first book in April um, and see what I think because I've, I've been having struggles finding older sci-fi epics that have clicked with me. Um, when I tried to do Foreigner last year, that didn't work out. So this is my next attempt. <laughs> We'll see if it works. Um, I'm just, I don't even have expectations. I tried to look up like the Wikipedia page and figure out what am I in for. And I think it's just epic space opera and that's fine. I'll let the world building happen. I'm just hoping for really vibrant characters that I latch onto. And I'm just like, yes, I am in it for this. I'm ready to follow your story, whatever that means. And I'm just trusting the people in my discord to tell me what order to read these books in because 
there are so many. There are so many. So if that works out, I'm going to keep reading it. And if not, it was an experiment that I tried. Um, so things that I want to continue. Realm of the Elderlings, Rainwild Chronicles, we are starting that again in May. I now read these with Grace and both Ben's and it's going to be very fun. And I'm hoping it's a fun time. I'm hoping I'm one of those people who has the weird unpopular opinion of liking these books. <laughs> Cause for some reason, I guess in the realm of elderling fandom, these don't do as well. I don't know, but we're going to read those. And I think they typically read one a month, which is totally fine for me. So it'll continue into summer and by fall be done, which will be nice. Cause I do think, I think of this setting in realm of the elderlings as like a summer series, which doesn't really matter. I can read things out of season all the time, but it's still kind of fun. And then the Vila. I would like to listen to season two. I haven't been prioritizing audio listening as much, which is funny because I went from like only listening to audiobook things to like not listening to audio things. So <laughs> we're going to attempt that because um, I, I want to see where the story goes. I'm hoping that it's not another cliffhanger because I don't know if there's a season three, but even still, it's been like a really enjoyable time. And Robin Miles is still the narrator and she's one of my favorites. So I'm going to try and prioritize season two this quarter. And then the kind of wild card, will this happen? I really want it to is Empire of Sand by Tasha Suri. I love this author. I really love the Burning Kingdoms trilogy so far. Um, like I got special editions of those books because they are darn near perfect fantasy for me. Also, if you thought the, the Burning Kingdoms trilogy, it starts with um, the Jasmine throne was a young adult. It is not. That, I mean, no, no shade on young adult. It's just, it doesn't follow the young adult formula. I just see, keep seeing people say this in videos and I'm like, why do you think this adult book is an adult book? Conversation for another day. It's an adult high epic political fantasy series with awesome religious based earth magic. Really try it out. Oh, I really like that series. That one's grown on me a lot since I first read the first book. Um, but Empire of Sand, I think was her debut and it's a fantasy romance and it's part of a duology, even though I know they're both companion novels to each other but I just want to read it and I keep not prioritizing it. So I am manifesting it by putting it on this list. And then the true wild card, it's probably not happening unless I suddenly like really want to listen to audiobooks is the Bone Shard Daughter trilogy. And I have, is it the Drowning Emperor series? I don't know the name of it. The third book is coming out. I have access to the second and third book um, on, I have arcs of both of those that I haven't read and I have read the first book, but I, wouldn't mind rereading it. And I do like the audio narrators. So I think that's how I want to approach that series because I like it, but I don't love it as much as other people, at least based off the first book. But that doesn't mean I don't want to see the trajectory of it. Like I am still interested in it. So is that going to happen this spring? I don't know. I have some heavy hitters. So that is like, it was on my winter series TBR too of like, maybe this will happen. So I won't be surprised if I'm talking to you guys in the summer and being like, yeah, that didn't happen. We're going to try again. Or maybe that's when I decide I don't have interest. <laughs> maybe I should stop trying to make it happen. But that is my series wrap up in TBR. Let me know what you're hoping to get to this spring. I'm so happy it's spring. <laughs> it's just lovely. I'm about to go out on a walk to go get some food in the neighborhood because it's just actually nice to walk outside now. I'm not miserable, which is lovely. I mean, more rain, but we've been, it's been raining all the time. It's just been colder. So it's nice to just have it be warmer, right? Uh, if you want to leave an emoji, leave flowers, like spring flowers, because that brings me joy. And otherwise, like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.